into the best of fives, teams are often very different. We also saw like very different performances yesterday from both Rogue and Mad, both teams stepping up and sort of downgrading in some regards, but we saw a hyper-competitive matchup, and the question is, will Misfits be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with G2, who are largely considered the favorites? We are about to jump into this best of five, our second of the weekend. So without further ado, let's play the music. A lot to talk about in picks and bans. Bot lane was really heavily contested yesterday with the Yumi, the Lucian Nami, Draven, Kalista as well. We saw targeted. So, looking at first picks for bot lane for G2, perhaps here, unless things like the Wukong are their priority. With Yumi already being removed, Draven taken off the board as well. That respect being given over towards Blackhead. Poppy, wow, okay, these bans wow. are coming in thick and fast. Both teams with a clearer game plan coming into this one. Jarvan on the first rotation screams to me that Sivir, Draven, Jarvan are two bans I think of when I think of Sivir for. Neon, if they go for the Lucian on first pick, they're probably going to match it with a Sivir. We'll see what support they go with as well, because last band coming in here for Misfits, a lot of G2 fans in the crowd today. Already loud, already proud of everything G2's doing. Happy with the... On flight 6. <laughs> the <laughs> Draven band against Flacket, I guess. Respect. Credit to Flacket, getting the Draven band out against him. The Lucian now as well, two bands towards Flacket, something we might not have expected at the start of the season, but he has been stepping up on an individual level. A not so flashy wow. potential Sejuani first pick That's now locked Sejuani. in. That's Sejuani jungle. Someone's been watching LNG. Tarzan was playing a lot of Sejuani jungle, I believe it was, with mini mids. It was a flex, yes, but I think that's for Yankos. We'll see how they rotate it, because of course, if they pick Wukong on 2-3, that's just going to be Sejuani Wukong. Broken Blade played it as well. I think G2 are happy with that first pick. There's the savior we expect that, with the bench. That's a lot of very valid points, Cajal, but in my head, all I can think of is back on Sejuani, Yankos. It's, the <laughs> <out of match. laughs> it's like lost a script game back on Sejuani. I wonder how it feels for Dylan. He's like, I, technically this is not my burden to inherit putting you on Sejuani, <laughs> but it's going to hurt you all the same. Yeah. Like, drops like small hints, like subconsciously, like you just put Sejuani on the wall somewhere. And yeah, Yanko yeah. just catches it as like a sixth <laughs> sense. And eventually Yankos just comes to the idea like Inception, and I want to play Sejuani. Like, I've been thinking that I really want to be tanky for like three seconds of a fight. Do you know any champion who could do that for me? Uh. Yeah. And with the Trundle Band, it makes sense to first pick Sejuani. Wukong wouldn't surprise me too much here for Zanzara or some kind of early game centric jungle. No, they're just going to okay. go. Sivir Lulu, G2 gonna go for Senna, oh! yes, Lulu, it's an instant response. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 we've seen these two champions wow. paired together, and they synergize very well with the Sejuani in the jungle, and that is what I am hoping they are for, but technically we could still see that Yasuo go elsewhere. It's true, uh, yeah. often you'll see Sejuani paired up with, well, laners that she can that can make use of her passive. Camille is a great example, uh, and Yone is, or Yasuo rather, is another one. But the question is, will this Yasuo actually go into the mid lane? Because there is room to flex it down towards the bot side of the map, yeah. especially when paired up with a Senna. It wouldn't surprise me if Broken Blade could even play at top lane too. Yeah, we could get a Diana uh, Yone here or something on a 4-5, I don't know, something along those lines. The Sejuani could even go bot. There's a lot of flexes that they could do, yes, but I think for now, we're expecting Yasuo into Sivir is one of the answers we saw in the regular split by SK. And now it's Misfits who, you could do a safe ban here of Tom Kench because you're playing Vi if you just want to avoid Senna Tom if you think Yasuo's going mid, but I think they presume it's both and they're going to go for these mid jungle bans. Taking the Wukong off for now. I like that Zanzar's already locked in something uh, comfortable and stable. Obviously nice to have something like the Vi and the more vulnerable champions such as the Senna or even the Yasuo in these fights. With Yasuo in the game naturally looking towards early advantages, one, two item spikes, what Yasuo is notorious for. Can't fall off if it comes down to full 5v5 team fighting later in the game. I do wonder if this Renekton ban, well obviously we've seen that Renekton is a very safe, blind pickable top laner in the current meta and Misfits likely want to save their counter pick for VTO to give him as much information as possible because of the amount of flexes, but I also think that Renekton as a removal, because Renekton can be quite good into Yasuo depending on whether they want to put it mid or top, removing that can also just guarantee G2 a slightly more favorable matchup. Yeah, there's a Diana ban in case the Yasuo does go mid. I do think something like a Silas on 4 here could be good for Misfits because then you know where the Sejuani is going, but then I wonder, does Irrelevant have a counter to Sejuani? Is Nard 
just his answer because we've seen Yone's into Sejuani's. Uh, but I'm not sure if he has the confidence to go for that kind of carry potential top as he's been that rock for Misfits. Akali Van definitely suggests that this Yasuo is going in the mid lane. Akali often uses a very good answer into the Yasuo. And we know that Vito is a very competent Akali player. One of his best champions, one of that he's gotten a number of highlight reels on. The question is, how will the rest of this round up? You talked about the Silas Cadrill. It will be locked in. Of course, another flexible champion can go both mid and top. Yeah, the question is, warm. where will Misfits take it? Exactly, they need to know where the Sejuani is going. Just save this last pick for irrelevant. You know, if you blind Nara and then he slams like a Yasuo top or an Irelia, it's broken blade, right? You can't really blind top lane right now. And then they have a good Irelia Sejuani into your Nara. It's quite a difficult uh, kind of draft to maneuver. Now the question is, what is going mid in jungle for G2? And I mean, the thing of 2019 G2, when you see these picks, you have no clue anything's going. Flashbacks here, there's an Aatrox. No, it's an Ari, so it will be Yasuo lane. bot. There you go. Was wondering if they would go for a Tom Kench there just to mitigate any potential value out of the buy pick on the opposite side, but of course it would mean horribly losing bot lane to the Sivir Lulu instead. Opting to keep the Yasuo bot for now is a good option into the Gnar if they pick a Gnar, but I feel like we're grasping at straws at that point. We'll just see what they want to lock in here to round out their composition. I'm not going to say anything until it's locked. It's going to be no Is it locked? Woo! Is it not Nocturne Jungle? It's Nocturne, Nocturne Jungle, jungle Sejuani top, yeah, yeah, Yasuo bot Ari mid. Okay, I was thinking of Doink be there for a second, Nocturne mid, Sejuani jungle, but I then, love, you know, Ari would be top. It's a bit weird, but yeah, You I think can't Betty's see right. it at home, but there's this like five second buffer pin period where Betty goes, Is there any way it's mid? Is there any way it's mid? Is there any way it's mid? And then he cal ca calmly takes a breath and goes, It's jungle, Nocturne. <laughs> well, now Irrelevant knows it's Sejuani top, they expect. Does he have. Anything for it? No, he's gonna go for the ore and just gonna go for something reliable, more team fighting. Misfits have a very stock standard meta draft when it comes yep. to just raw team fight, good wave clear, good engage. I think the Misfits have gotten themselves a very comfortable draft for themselves. When we think about Misfits, one of their biggest strengths so far this split has been their team fighting. They work very well as a team. Their early games have slowly been improving with the addition of Zanzara to the roster. And I think that going up against a team like G2 to start off this best of five, getting something comfortable and easy to execute is a great way to start the series off. And one thing I will say for G2's comp, good news, you've got a Yasuo win wall for Ornold to stop engage. Bad news, the Yasuo has no knockups other, other than a Sejuani Q, basically. That's it. There's no Wukong, there's no Diana, there's no big explosive Yasuo engage on this Sivir. So Flakid's going to have to be very, very kind of individual prowess and in finding knockups to get in the ults in the fight. But I do think the Yasuo is just very good into Sivir. That wind wall does a great job of mitigating all of her bouncing boomerangs. She has so many things that can basically be mitigated with a well placed wind wall. And I think that their 2v2 in the bot lane. There's room to be able to shut this Sivir down, assuming that they get some jungle attention. We'll have to wait and see what G2 do huh. in the early game. We're in for an exciting one. G2 always brings something new and creative into the draft. And while this isn't too crazy, too far left field, it's definitely something that I don't think anyone was really expecting in game one of this best of five. Ooh, and we're tracking Yankos' missed skill shots. He's only got one on the Nocturne. We'll see how it works out. First Nocturne of the year for the LEC. Caps his dad out here and proud. He's got a bunny rabbit too, though, playing both sides. <laughs> a little bit sus as we brace ourselves for the first game of the series. He used his flag to strangle the bunny rabbit. I think he <gasps> just yeah. got cut oh, off. So dang. we're ready for game one of G2 versus Misfits. Echoes of the G2 fans in the audience showing us a different perspective from the three ones and the three twos we heard on the desk. Absolute faith in their team to bring this one home. And if they're going to bring it home, it's going to be a lot about building these leads early on. We know the team fighting prowess of Misfits. We know what they can do when they get through the early game scot free. G2, can they pick up the pace? These level six spikes are big for their lineup. Can they make them work? Can they build greater advantages early on? Now, Misfits are stacking up in a way that allows them to prepare for this early ward that Yankos wants to drop. Yeah, Yankos just threw a Q over the wall and he sees his kind of shadowy thing that lingers after it hits a target, but he's already seeing Zanzara, so he knows someone's in that bush. It's called Dustbringer. Dustbringer, is that what it's called? But maybe they're gonna level one invade here. I mean, there's three seconds till buff spawn, Yankos and Brokely. Did VTO spot them? No, he didn't, and they haven't warded either, so Zanzara is completely unaware of this happening. They were covering it, but now he's gonna run into a Nocturne Sejuani. Over the wall, there's Broken Blade started up. Gonna just have to flash out early. No hesitation to make it happen. Wow. Yanko's taking two camps at the same time. One's gonna reset. He will instead focus on the red buff. 
And we saw this yesterday, game three, four, and five. Malrang got late invaded on his buff, lost all of them at the start of the game, which obviously hinders your jungler so much because the enemy jungler will get three quadrants of the map. Yankos can do red raptors here, go through mid, maybe look for a gank if ETO is playing aggressive, and then just full clear back down from bot to top to make sure his red can't get taken away. But a good adaptation there from Yankos, given that typically we see teams... Yeah. Cap's actually looking for level two real quick. Not going to push anything off the back of it. But uh, often we'll see these teams try and move up to drop that early ward to get information on where the enemy jungle starts. Misfits had set up to prepare for that early invade, but when Yankos was suspicious that, hey, I think that there might be a lot of people in this brush, they converted into the late invade and they're able to get a big advantage off the back of it. So G2 already find themselves with a slight early lead in the jungle head to head. I wonder what Zanzara will do. Will he get level three and just trying to poke himself into the enemy red buff? Now the idea here is it's a bit of a mind game, so bear with me. Zanzara Zanzara thinks that Yankos is going to go to his red now because he will ideally try to deny it from Zanzara, but in this case, he's just going to full clear from top to bot. So Zanzara could walk there, see if it's up, take it away. If he does, then maybe it's gone. If he doesn't, then he can save more time in clearing his own camps out like the Krug. So Yankos taking a small gamble here with no push in bot will be rewarded as Zanzara plays a little bit more defensive and he'll spot him out just as this ward's going to expire. Ooh, crucial to have that vision as well because you can see individually irrelevant absolutely dominating the top side 1v1 in terms of early trades. So Zanzara thinks that Yankos went bot to take his red, so now he thinks he's safe on this top side. Yankos now hiding and waiting for him to go for this mid gank. Waiting. Using the movement speed very well on the Ari. Taking it slow on this one. Now the flash in, trying to lock things up. Zanzara, they know he has no flash from before. Oh, he's a scared little boy, and it makes sense. It's first blood for G2. And it's blue buff on the Ari at three minutes in. Caps is going to have so much mid push for these next few minutes. G2 red Zanzara incredibly well. The vision being utilized to perfection. Yankos and Caps coming up clutch there, and they're able to punish. Handing that blue buff over to Caps is going to make this matchup even more oppressive in the early game. Can it be a bit difficult? We see trading down on the bottom side. One of the biggest issues you highlighted in the draft, Cadrill, is as we move to mid game, not really very many catalysts to get the Yasuo knockup. You see little signs of that already in the bot lane as Sivir can just spell shield the tornado. So one of two can always be stopped and interrupted. But for now, Almost a 1,000 gold lead in favor of G2 early on. A great level one invade transitioned into that early gank mid. Make for a very commanding G2 uh, game so far. Yeah, good mind games from Yankos. Also really good vision so far from G2. They've tracked Sanzara this whole game long. All four minutes, they've known exactly where he is. That knockoff landed. Maybe Flackett could have looked for an all-in, but it's going to miss. Caps is going to back off, spend the gold that he got from the first blood. And Zanzara, I don't think he got anything on this top side other than the crab. Oh, I actually thought he got the wall. I think he did get the walls. Um... Oh, yes, he did get that's the what I thought. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so up. because the pings were coming down onto the red buff, and he was like, uh, based on the pathing that Yankos had, based on his level, I'm pretty sure he's now doing a clear into bot side, which means that I can actually steal stum stuff away from the top side. Mm -hmm. It did force Broken Blade to play a little bit more defensively, uh, but his wave is now in a bit of an awkward spot, and he's the person that needs to be the most cautious, but with the low mana on Irrelevant, he should be in a fine position. That means that Yankos is just going to hover bot while his bot lane gets to push in, and Broken Blade gets some information. Is Broken Blade going to drop a pink in this jungle? Would be really good information if he puts his pink in one of these brushes. And Ooh. again, if Zanzara moves down, they'll spot him, but I expect him to base and go to his Grump other than maybe if you look for something around top or mid. But yeah, G2's jungle tracking so far, basically flawless. I took the words right out of my mouth, Cable. I mean, they have had just about flawless information on Zanzara the entire game, making it so difficult for that buy to get anything done. And of course, Nocturne getting closer and closer to six, and that's really where he comes online. So the fact that they've had so much early impact with this pick that they've been able to use his early game dueling prowess, even if he's maybe not the best immediate ganker compared to the buy, is a fantastic start for G2. And it stings because on the one hand, if they know where you are and you know that they know you're there, you can play around it. But Zanzara's sweeper missed everything. He doesn't really know that he's being tracked this whole game long, so G2 just playing with mission Caps level Locked 6 in, now. Caps. The dash away. VTO now level 6 as well. He's going to have to take away one of the ultimates and try to get out. Ariel stolen. Yanko's not quite able to take over to 6. Still a long way to go. Just hit 5, but competitive trade there in the mid lane. Yanko's holding on to his jungle advantage and cancelling the recall. These little advantages are really starting to add up. Now Yankos is looking for information from both sides. Maybe looking for VTO here. He wants to get the next wave in. Caps his flash. He can E-flash. Will not commit. Instead, just going to back away here, but control around this mid lane really in favor of G2 Esports. Good news for the side of Misfits, however, is bot lane as expected early on here, farming very well. But excellent uh, tornado coming in there from Flack. It holds it while Neon busts out the spell shield, so it does get a little bit back. So the good news for Misfits is that 
while the jungler right now is just being completely bullied, they still have that late game win condition, right? You know that they're going to scale well as the game progresses. You know they have a very standard front-to-back team fight. The question is, how much of a lead can G2 build off the back of this jungle difference in the early game? So far, G2 already securing a very early Drake. They'll be able to convert this into the Scuttle Crab, and I expect them to rotate up towards the early Herald to continue to push this momentum even further forward. Yeah, red buff respawning for Sanzara. He'll walk over there, but again, that pink is still there. Hopefully, for Misfit's sake, he'll spot that pink when he clears out those camps, because there's two pinks in his jungle right now at minute seven into the game. I think he's looking for bot crab, but I think that's gone. He sees the pink, realizes he's spotted, and maybe him and Mursa wants to move into the bot side jungle to get some vision, but crab's gone. She too in control. No, it's still up, actually. Jankos leave it on 1 HP. Oh, well, no, no, he I just, think he, he was bailed. paranoid yeah. because uh, the Civet did reset and he was worried about when Neon would be coming back and he knew that his mid laner needed to go back to base. So Jankos saying, you know what, not worth it. Yeah. If it's up later, I'll maybe grab it, but I'm not going to gamble it right now. Credit to G2 again for holding on to control in this early game. For Misfits, their early game has been improving. You can see in the first half, it was abysmal, to be completely honest with you. Now, second half, it was a lot better overall, but still trailing a bit behind a lot of our best early game teams. Now. This game showing us a bit more of the first half Misfits as opposed to the second half Misfits and something we need to track as we move through this series because every time these teams have played each other prior, it's been very snowball -y. Win the first game, win the whole series. For sure. Bit of a history between these two teams where it has historically always been that 3-0. Question is, will history change today? G2 are considered the favorites coming into this matchup and they have, of course, already locked a spot at the World Championship. Misfits fighting for that opportunity, and they will get another one even if they lose today. Now, both teams posturing towards this Herald. G2 will be the ones to start. Jankos already kicking things off. Paranoia now coming out, trying to burn the Orn down before the team fight can break out by waiting in the area, but there's just too many members on the top side. You're not even going to use the Orn wow. off the follow up CC. This is what these champions were made for. Level six skirmishing, they make it happen. Very clean play from G2. Caps was able to get the collapse first. They knew they had the numbers advantage, and the second that Irrelevant burnt his flash, there was no way he was going to be able to escape. Now Misfits trying to answer on the bot side while Flackhead loses life. Flackhead has the wind wall up and available. I don't think they have the damage here. No. Just a little bit of a chunk on it. At least even that. They're going to lose the Herald as well here. So G2 off to a fantastic early game start using their mid prio from the early stages of punishing that first blood to move around the map to make sure they have numbers advantage in Zanzara. He's going to go for a mid play here on the Caps. Knocked up. Taken down. BTO with the immediate follow up. CC. Senna Shield buys a bit more time. Caps. Trying to flash out back to safety. Clean movement. Doesn't connect on the charm. Those hands are maybe going to fish for a little bit more. Stolen Senna oh, will not finish the kill. Misfits not getting anything back. And now Yankos is in the mid lane to stop anything else from happening. G2 getting away with so much. Sanzara could have looked a little bit silly there if he queued in because Targamas still has heal. And I think he was aware of it. If he dashed in and the heal came out, the move speed would be able to kite out the, the divide. And then he would just die again. So you can understand why he doesn't go for that play. And it's Neon who will try to crash his bot wave as quick as possible after seeing Flakhead move towards mid. Some good mechanics there from VTO though, stealing away the center ultimate. I'm gonna have a look back at this play from earlier. The vision did spot out Zanzara. Tries to clear up whatever vision he can, but they know exactly where he is. Yankos immediately collapses onto Irrelevant. And the play's very straightforward. We talked about it. Caps just gets the collapse in first. And uh, yep. easy double for G2. And, just, and I think that's just such a big problem because if you actually look at the, the replay of that situation, you can see that this bush has just been controlled by G2 the entire game long. There was a pink in it earlier that they managed to clear out, but there's still a pink on the red. So the top side of the map is just G2 dominated right now. So any play Zanzara makes, Caps can always match it. And it's such a difficult position for Misfits to play the game from because Ari is so wildly far ahead. And obviously Misfits are always going to have that late game scaling sort of win condition. But if the side lanes here for G2 get strong enough, they may never get the opportunity to scale into that late game, into their period of strength and certainly suffering right now. Broken Blade will be spotted on a ward. He it may look like he's in danger, but he's not. Caps is on his way, ults forward. Ulti now wow. coming out again. CC lockup stun. They're just making it look too easy. Pushing R off cooldown. BTO onto the side. Maybe they can get to the gun. Versa and Targum is now running in. BTO taking away the Ariel. Gonna try to make it out. Zanzar surely now going to drop another kill for G2. They are merciless. If they see a hero, they're gonna kill hero. It's IG flashbacks. I know it's Caps getting all the kills here, but this really is just the Yankos show. The way he's manipulating the jungle right now, the entire top side is just in full control of G2, and they're going to push this lead even more. It's absolutely spotless, their gameplay, the last 11 minutes, the picks, the vision, the moves from mid, even Targamas 
getting himself involved from both despite not having the push is always there first saves caps on the initial play from misfits now helps him out with even more numbers on his top side fight g2 are basically playing with a map hack this whole game long because of yankos broken blade moving around the jungle uh, on the top side and cap just making sure he's holding yankos's hand every time he wants to make these plays yeah i mean it's just it's it's excellent teamwork for from the from the whole top side. Of course, like no disrespect to Flak and Targumus, of course, but their responsibility is to just sit back and farm this game yeah. while G2's top side kind of takes control. And it all comes off the back of that single level one invade. The way in which they converted that into the lead that they have now just goes to show how you can take these small advantages and balloon them out of control. And I think the thing that's scary is that the Yasuo, once he gets a single item, is going to be very strong, and especially strong in the 1v1 with the exhaust against Neon. If he's ever left on a side lane, he's going to be incredibly comfortable. And while Neon, yeah, has a 500 gold individual lead, that's not enough to carry a team fight against a Nocturne and an Ari who will jump on you at the first opportunity. The rest of this game is going to be very difficult for Misfits. The good news, they've slowed down the dragon stacking. By them a bit more time before those big major objectives like Soul or Elder are on the table, but still a very hard storm to weather. Yeah, I was going to say that securing that Drake is definitely a a small win, but a win nonetheless for Misfits, just because if G2 keeps stacking these Drakes, they will be the ones in position to force a fight on their turns. Misfits ideally want to wait as long as possible, get the items that they need, buy a little bit more time, and right now Neon is doing a great job. You can see 133 CS but ahead of the 13 minute mark. He's taking advantage of what he can in this lane, and he, alongside Vito, are still your primary carries. For Misfits, that can still turn this game around. Definitely are, but with that mid-tier one falling, we'll see Caps push these waves even deeper, get even more vision. Zanzar will get his red buff for now, but when Yankos and Targamas are back, back out on the map, they will start contesting this topside vision again. Control three quadrants of the jungle again. That pink ward still there from Broken Blade, level five, I think it was, he placed it. Zanzar still hasn't spotted it. Free information. Look at Broken Blade again. Another ward on Krux. Your top lane is tracking the enemy jungler on two camps. Your mid lane is tracking his raptors, and Yankos can just work with that information. So 4k gold lead, they can push in these waves. Targamas hovering, topside jungle is theirs, and slowly we'll see this top tower get shipped away at his flaked farm spot. Misfits either need to respond with a big numbers advantage topside with Neon rotating, or try to dive flaked on this Yasuo. And in those G2 egregiously misposition, they're always going to be able to trade something back, even if Misfits commit multiple members. Now you see Misfits three members on the bottom side, but G2 ready to move four people down here if necessary. Targamas, not going to overstep, not going to over-risk anything in that context, so will not cost them anything just to posture around the bottom this side. This is the power of mid-push. Just look at the mini-map right now. I won't actually highlight anything in particular, but just look at it. There's three pink, th three wards in the top side jungle. There's a pink on their entrance towards Wolves. Ooh, they can just observers. push waves into Tier 2 and move wherever the hell they want on the map. If you want to make a play, no chance. G2 can match it. If they want to make a play, they'll always be first, so... It's a really tough spot for Misfits. Their ideal situation now is just farm up as much as possible, get the Sivir to three items, get some wave clear in mid, maybe get VT on a side lane after the lane phase is over, and then try to find ways to contest his objectives because they are still quite away from a, a Dragon Soul. They certainly are, but uh, G2 playing the map fall asleep for the time being. Things looking very good for G2 and Misfits, they just kind of forced to play defensively. Of course, for anyone that's familiar with the LEC, they'll know that these gold leads don't really mean anything at all when it comes to these two teams <laughs> facing up against each other. We've seen some of the well, craziest comebacks mm -hmm. from both sides uh, in matchups like this, and they've always gone down to these late game team fights, which is why, while things look great for G2 and there is very little to criticize on the side of G2, there is this Misfits magic that always makes these games very chaotic and bloodthirsty as we get closer to the late game. Yeah, and I, it is important to temper because we do have so many teams throw bigger leads than even this, but G2 certainly in control for now. Yanko's pushing into the top side spell shield now. Gons are already to ward away, so Nocturnal not quite having the impact that they were looking for. Flack and fishing for a tornado there, but will not find it. So first time we're really seeing that ult not have immediate impact for the side of G2. Yeah, Flash will be burnt for that ult. Yankos wanted to start up the Herald, but now it gets a little bit more complicated. Wait for top push, wait for mid push. You can see what Misfits have done. They say the whole top side's falling apart. How do we fix it? We swap our lanes, put our bot lane top, and now we have pushing lane in top, and we can actually start to contest his vision around Herald. They're actually starting it up. Caps doesn't have TP just yet. Yankos is basing, so this is, will be the, the second neutral objective going over to Misfits. They got the second dragon. They say that Yankos stops his base. He might think that... Hang on a second, Misfits are doing this. Can on the way, Broken Blade has TP, so it is irrelevant. Irrelevant, and now going to TP fully commit to this. G2 at least getting that major cooldown out, leaving bot lane tower unattended for now. Seems like G2 happy with that exchange, saying, hey, we will take some bot side tower damage in exchange for the Herald. Inside the TP. 
Oh, so they're actually going to use this top. I wondered if they were actually going to use this mid to try and alleviate some of the pressure that this mid jungle from G2 has been putting down. But they're saying, no, we want to get this immediate advantage while we can. We know that Broken Blade is pushing in bot. And because we have four members top, they should be able to push this all the way down to the T2. Without Nocturnal, the four members grouped here, it's going to be very hard for G2 to stop the tools that they have available. Flacken waiting in the brush, going to make sure the second charge does not come through alongside Targamus. So only that one tower taken down. Broken Blade looking to make it a trade on the bottom side. No TP is really to respond unless BTO wants to TP bot lane, but it seems like they're just willing to give that up in this case. Yeah, they were down on tempo, I think, so they just wanted to crack open that top tier on base and be in time for Drake, irrelevant to use the TP. So you don't really want to TP in, expecting a fight, then just recall on the spot. It's better to just yeah. use that TP to find a play. When Nocturnal is down, Caps will get the blue, push out in top from Blackhead. Now we'll see G2 group up towards this dragon because I think their comp really wants to fight when you've got things like the shield bow already on the Yasuo. You've got this sizable gold lead on your mid jungle top side. You want to TP in, there's Broken Blade on bot. Get these waves in, 10 seconds on the objective. Misfits are first, but G2 have a hell of a lot of engage. Okay, so we get an opportunity to look back at the items. Oh, no time, the fight is starting off. Oh. Where is it going to go? Ornhorn now blown, it's going to knock it back, but it's immediately going to get Windwall. That's the follow-up, the entire team now diving in. Caps up to the back side, unstoppable on the front line. BTO, Neon untouched, dishing out damage, only a single item, but it's flacking off to the side, fishing for one kill, looking to finish the job. BTO now dashing, running for his life, sprinting away, but he will get finished in the back side. The Yasuo popping off, the one item spike we were waiting for. Neon running, the spell is going to block, but it's not the charm that he blocks. Caps in the way, and he has the flash, really fully commit for this. The side step is clean. Neon. Cleansing out of that one, the Ignite now ticking, but he will walk away, or will he? No! Unstoppable! Leandris finishes it! Oh, it's an absolute whitewash. Misfits obliterated. They wanted to fight in the pit. They wanted a fair fight, but they will not find it. And Caps will be the benefactor of all these kills. Ten kills to zero. G2 just white Misfits off the map and continue to dominate game one. Yeah, unbelievable team fight from G2. Caps stepping up. Not missing a single beat in this fight. It's Zanzara who kicks this off against Broken Blade. Realizes he has to flash away, but then it's when Yankos goes in. The Ore knockup misses because of the wind ball, but then the knockup from Relevant doesn't look too bad. It allows Neon to get a little bit of damage out, but the damage from G2 is just way too high. Zanzara has to flash away. Relevant's already dead. And then allows Caps to get these resets to start moving forwards. Vizio tries to peel for his jungler, but he ends up running into the carries of G2, and then it's just a cap show from there onwards. It's interesting how that fight was basically just a stock standard front to back, but G2's crowd control was landing, whereas Misfits just wasn't. Irrelevant did what he could to set up his team for success, but even when he did it, the damage just wasn't coming through from the side of Misfits. The Silas was forced out very quickly. The Sivir just wasn't hitting as hard as he would have liked to, and G2 just clean sweep the fight. And I think in a fight when you're that far down, every cooldown is super, super impactful. And there's a world where Sivir has three items where Windwall and the Ornalt could lose you the fight. But when they're this far ahead, when Sivir's on one and a half items, you can take away that major form of CC and it really stops all of Misfit's potential follow-up because Broken Blade still far ahead of the clock in terms of tankiness. They cannot get through him to get to Targamus, to get to Caps, and then they just get to leap into the back line. Very tough game for Misfit's now. Regular season G2 is one thing, playoffs G2 is another, playoffs caps is another, 100% kill participation right now. Looking for a play on the Broken Blade here, Misfits. Locked up, Broken Blade. Now on the retreat here, Zanzara trying to finish the job. Broken Blade knocked up, should be taken out here on this one. Stolen away ultimate, BTO gonna finish it. One pick traded back, objective bounties up and on the map. Misfits on the board, but they're gonna lose a top tier one for that. They had to use five members and five ultimates to kill a Sejuani, so of course they're gonna lose out on other sides of the map. Good punish there by G2, good play by Misfits. We'll see if BTO finds himself a fight up against Flaggett here, but with his team in base or in mid with no ults to help him, he's just gonna have to catch this wave. I'm not even sure he wins that 1v1 at this point. Like, uh, Flaggett feels very strong right now. And uh, I respect Misfits for trying to find a pick, doing what they can to get back into the game, but G2 are not going to allow this game to slow down. They're going to start off the Baron. 20 minute Baron just started up just like that. They've got a little bit of vision to work with. Zanzara completely unaware. I don't think Misfits have any clue. There's the blue orb, 6k HP. It Zanzara so has fast. smite. The taps just jump over the wall here and zone him away, I wonder. TP coming in, they need to go if they're going to go now. Can they, they still this, this is how they can bring it back. In. They're trying to go, oh he gets my. it! Oh, 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 Misfits! Waiting on a miracle, and they're gonna find it now. Caps pushing for a little bit more, but is he the one who has overstayed? Misfits taking away, not only is it an objective bounty, it's the Baron buff to boot. G2 throwing so much out the window. Neon now trying to sidestep, needs to get away. Clean spell shield means he's gonna walk away. 6k gold lead for G2, but they throw the Baron away. So the idea behind the Baron was good. 
but the moment that they got spotted is when they needed to disengage. And the fact that they disengage at 2k HP means that Misfits are just like, well, okay, cool, thanks for the leash, bro. We'll finish that for you. Zanzara dives in, takes the smite, and Misfits are saying, you know what? We'll happily take that trade any day of the week. Ooh. Yeah, there's three outcomes there. One, Caps jumps over the wall and tries to fight Zanzara while they finish. Two, they full commit and just try to get a 50-50 in G2's hands where they're actually having multiple members damaging it along with the smite. Or number three, Zanzara just comes in and steals it. G2 were slightly indecisive when it was 1.5k HP. It's really difficult to just back away from a Baron at that because Misfits will just commit. That's their miracle. Would you say that they did a bit of a BDS during the regular season? I'm just saying. Wow. You know, nah. <laughs> <laughs> they did. Now, G2 on the misfits. attack once again. Broken Blade. Forward. Taking away these Baron buffs is big. Right now, mostly what these Baron buffs do is buy time, and that time can get taken away very quickly if they get picked off. Caps now leaping forward. Send it all just to do a little bit more damage. Mercer locked up and take it down off to the side. Caps now godlike. G2 making sure to cement their advantage further in the top side. It's a good pick by G2 to slow the top push down, but I think the bot push is where the pressure is for Misfits because they have objective bounties. They got an objective bounty on the Baron. They're going to get an objective bounty on this bot tier one. So despite Mercer losing his life, I think Misfits come up slightly ahead. I mean, when the team has Baron, it's very hard to get winning plays against it, even if they are behind. But there is another objective bounty for Misfits who aren't out of this game just yet. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where, okay, you lost your support, but you got that tower in exchange. And you can see that off the Baron power play, Misfits, they're still 1.7k up. Yeah. Like, this is only a net game for Misfits, and they're buying more time. This Sivir is slowly working towards a third item. And while, of course, Lackett still has the Infinity Edge right now, it's one of those things where you look, and Misfits now have a very clear window back into this game. The toughest task for Misfits now is the Dragon stacking. 25 seconds on the spawn, G2 are going to contest mid waves, walk into this Dragon pit, and it's the 5v5 all over again. Are Misfits more well prepared for this fight than they were last time? Yes, but they're up against a G2 comp that spikes exactly at this time in the game. I would consider even just giving it up and instead trying to play for that tier two in the top lane or maybe even the tier one in mid, instead just try and get more gold into your back pocket because you can afford to lose this trade. I think a VTO TP top here, I wouldn't mind it too much. Just TP on this wave, buff up the uh, wave with the last 20 seconds of the Baron buff and try to get that tier two. I think Vedi's right there because they're just walking into their own demise here. If they try to contest it, I have to feel G2 will have so many angles of engage and Neon doesn't have that infinity edge yet, but looks like Misfits are confident. They're going to push in this mid wave. They're going to move into this dragon pit, you have to imagine. VTO trying to zone away, Caps get a chance, but maybe. Locked up. Ulti coming out. Traded for Wind Wall. Misfits want to go, they need to go now. That cooldown's going to be back up in a second. VTO now caught out. Paranoia coming in. Zanzar debating where does he go? What can he even see? Locked wow. down on the mid laner. Taken out. No Zanyas for VTO. Caps now on the hunt. This man unstoppable. About to be legendary. Another kill coming down. Flacken will not go down so quickly. Irrelevant does not have the damage to finish the fight. Caps is legendary. G2 dominating Misfits. The re-engage from Caps was just so clean. Even though he was forced to use one of his spirit rushes early in the fight, he then used the last two of them to re-engage the fight and find a great charm onto VTO. That set up the knockup for Flackhead, which ultimately resulted in his demise. That'll be another one team fight for G2. That'll be another Dragon and Misfits after getting a small advantage back into this game, immediately lose it at the hands of Cax. Yeah, the Baron made it look like it could be close. It could give Misfits time, but G2 just slammed that door in their face. Good team fighting, good execution. We can see why G2 is one of the best, if not the best team in Europe right now. When it comes to playoffs, everyone's favorite, looking incredibly dominant in this game one. And it's scary now we look ahead to the games coming up in the series because now suddenly Flacket on Yasuo is a threat. They already banned 280 carries, the Lucian and the Draven. Well, they have to ban a third when we head to the second game. It's not over yet, but you can see how commanding G2 have looked and how good Caps has looked in this exchange. Here's the knockup from Flacket. We talked about the Yasuo not having that many, but he manages to land on VTO, chain CC, he goes down. Zanzara tries to peel, and Irrelevant gets a good knockup as well to allow Neon some space, but you're already three versus five, and they have shield bows, they have self peels, they have heals, and they can just run you down. Just a really good play from Caps. And uh, Yank was like, well, my life's super easy as a jungler when Caps is my mid laner. I think he's saying, you know, if we just got that Baron, this game would be over by now. But I guess we could just ace him in mid. Uh, G2 now setting up for that next Baron in one minute. Yeah. By the way, tank damage. Definitely looking strong. 2k for both. At this stage of the game, Misfits just trying to hold on to whatever they can. Again, buying time is the name of the game, but they don't have a lot of time at this stage. Caps now locked up, but there's no follow-up CC. The paranoia, making sure that no one has the ability to follow up. VTO's taking away the Nocturnal. He wants to finish something, but he's been charmed. He's been locked up off to the side, and now he has been cut down. Sonya's ticking, buying him a brief moment with the rest of the team. Now maybe Misfits split. can find something. VTO bought so much time for the team. Maybe Misfits can get something done. The death ball from Misfits holding strong for now, but so far it is just a one Targamus. for zero. Targamus overstaying. Neon trying to run forward on the front line, but that is not a Zeri, that is a Sivir. 
He will not have the immediate backline access. He will not have the enough movement speed to find his way back. And G2 grabbing one in the exchange. It looked okay for Misfits because of the amount of split up that G2 actually did in that fight, right? You had Yang cost a broken blade against four members of Misfits. VTO buying so much time, but not enough damage to cut through this front line. Of course, Nocturne is building tanky. Caps gets ulted by Zanzara, but it's a relevance or knockoff that doesn't connect in time. Caps dashes away from it, and this is where the fight splits because VTO commits with the Nocturnal stolen away, and it's Broken Blade who TPs in behind next to Yankos in the two versus four. The Lulu Severe will kite back. Will be very hard for this front line to kill, but the stopwatch saves Yankos, and then VTO dies. The rest of G2 can collapse. I will say the use of paranoia there from Yankos was really clean because the second that Caps got engaged on, it made it so much harder for Misfits to then follow up. Caps is able to outplay that situation, walk away with another kill. 16 to 1 is now the kill score. G2 starting off this Baron once more. This time, though, much more control around the top side jungle. Irrelevant does have TP. Let's see if Zanzara can steal it again. Can we get two in a row? Zanzara debating. The Q cooldown going to go away, though, now. Flip it again. The timing's not going to be great. Using the Nocturne to deny the vision, but he's flashing into the pit anyway. They need to burn him down. 2k getting lower and lower, but maybe Misfits can find the fight. Neon off to the side is going to be big. The Baron ticking. G2 going to grab that one, most certainly. Misfits now running, trying to find a clean fight. Flacken getting back behind the wind wall. Yang goes off to the side. Caps flashing cleanly away from Irrelevant. Flacken now moving forward, but he will not connect on the tornado. That's going to be big. Neon now chasing for more. Caps off to the side, but it's Neon and Versa versus the bot lane and mid lane. Meanwhile, VTO still fighting forward. Maybe with a bit more healing, he can survive, but they have too much CC. Yanko's on a rampage. Misfits, it's a heroic effort. They're trying to take down Flacken. They're trying to finish the job to knock up the wind wall. Flacken! Not quite able to survive. Misfits now running back. Targum is now locked up. Caps waiting to come over the wall. Irrelevant has to get out of there. Misfits are holding on, but they're slowly but surely losing the game as it falls apart one more time. Very I impressive Baron there from G2. It looked like it could be a flip, but the Nocturnal secures it. It certainly does, G2. They held their nerve, and now they're looking for Neon. more. Locked up, the slow man just connect, there's no way. Taking out all that extra range. The Sun has been stacking souls all game. 149, don't forget about Targamus. Rapid fire cannon center, <laughs> hitting like a truck. And overall, just an exquisite game from G2. Outside of the Baron that they did lose earlier, a lot more patient this time around. Once again, great use of the Paranoid to make that approach much harder. The flash into the charm, into the CC, into the execute. Means that the Baron doesn't get low enough for Zantara to steal it away. Yankos picks that one up, and then this is where the fight gets a little bit better for Misfits, but you can see how disjointed it is as it's being fought on two fronts. And it's Neon and Mercer who are the ones who have to carry this fight. The Irrelevant and VTO can never win this 1v1 or 1v2. They're just buying time so that Neon and Mercer can maybe find their way back into this fight to clean up. We see VTO eventually off to the side and then it's Neon and Mercer who tried to turn it managing to take down Flacket who almost gets the outplay off the stopwatch win the windwall I think he tries to windwall here and then dash through the Orn but the auto attack must have connected no it was the Orn who actually got the kill there but now we're back to live and we see G2 sieging towards Misfits' base who may look for a fight yeah with an IE but Nemesis are split immediately the Nocturne is going to go forward but he's going in onto the tank might not be the ideal target but it just does not matter G2 are simply too far ahead Dash in for Broken Blade, clean hit the slow. VTO getting caught on the backside, the charm, the follow-up. Zanzara trying to buy a bit more space, but Neon is yet to auto-attack in this fight. Now he's just hitting minions. Misfits cannot find the fight that they are looking for. G2 just continuing to find kills left and right. So much pressure. Misfits can't even walk into their own jungle right now, and the Baron buff creeps means that Neon has to wave clear. Targamas on the center, 159 stacks with rapid fire outranges Neon right now. So every time he walks up, we'll see Targamas hit him with the rapid fire. Again, look at the damage from the center. Neon almost dead already. Misfits. Forward. Meanwhile, Dragon Soul being slowed up by Yankos. It's only going to get harder here. So many champions using that buff. Well, BTO waking, waiting off to the side. Wild Growth now used. Zanzara now retreating. Knockup comes in. Flacken looking for blood. BTO goes golden, but he's just waiting. The setup's there. He's going to get stunned right when he comes out there. It's nothing left. G2. Dominance in the early game, a little bit sloppy around the Baron, but the rest of the game absolutely clean from G2 Esports. A force to be reckoned with in their first best of five of playoffs. This it's making a last effort hold, but you have to feel it should end here. Unbelievable game from G2. Target mass caps in Yankos, like the trio who was just destroying Misfits, dismantling them, black and broken blade doing their jobs, and they're just gonna take them out on the base. One more ulti all it takes, one more stun. G2 simply cleaning house. Game already won, but grabbing a few more kills on their way wow. out. Crushing game one. Misfits need to rally coming into game two. 12-0-12 on the RE caps here in game one of playoffs. It doesn't get much better than that. G2 are in four. I mean, it's caps in playoffs. You know? yeah. He's got a crowd. He's got the energy behind him. And here in game one, he's already looking clean. Of course, I do think a lot of credit needs to be given to Yankos in that early game. 
I mean, Rogue Blade as well. The way that they invaded level one, how they shut that down. Yeah, it was just around mid lane, flawless tracking of the, the jungler. Whole